Hi, I'm Samer Hattar. I'm an Associate Professor of Biology and Neuroscience at Johns Hopkins University. And I'm Tiffany Schmidt, a postdoctoral fellow at Johns Hopkins University. And today we're going to be telling you about some exciting results published in this issue of Neuron showing that melanopsin signaling in retinal ganglion cells actually influences vision. Now, light is sensed within the retina by the classical rod and cone photoreceptors. This information is then relayed via a network of interneurons to the ganglion cells, which then project axons to downstream targets in the brain. And ganglion cells can be subdivided into two classes. Off-ganglion cells have dendrites stratifying in the off-sublamina of the interplex form layer and respond to decreases in light intensity. On-ganglion cells have dendrites stratifying in the on-sublamina of the interplex form layer and respond to increases in light intensity. And in fact, it was recently discovered that a subset of retinal ganglion cells are in fact intrinsically photosensitive due to the expression of a photopigment melanopsin. And these ganglion cells are called IPRGCs. Now, IPRGCs are incredibly unique because they're constantly integrating this intrinsic melanopsin-based signal with this extrinsic synaptic signal relayed from the outer retinal rod cone photoreceptors. Now, initially, IPRGCs were described as a uniform population of cell, which we now call M1, that projected to non-image forming brain regions to influence functions such as circadian photoentrainment. However, we and others have now discovered that there are, in fact, multiple subtypes of IPRGC. And very interestingly, these newly discovered subtypes of cell project to areas of the brain involved in image formation. However, prior to this work, no behavioral function for these newly discovered IPRGC subtypes had yet been identified. And in fact, this work came about relatively serendipitously when we found that SMI32, which is a marker for alpha retinal ganglion cells and is known not to co-label with melanopsin immunopositive cells, does in fact co-label with a subset of IPRGCs in a mouse line where IPRGCs are genetically labeled. And you could imagine my concern when Tiffany came to my office to show me this data, but I was relieved and happy when Tiffany decided to look at the distribution of these positive cells in the retina and found that only on alpha RGCs are positive for the genetic marker, while off ganglion cells are not positive for the marker. More importantly, these two populations have different distribution across the retina, and only the on alpha RGCs are intrinsically photosensitive, and now we know they correspond to the M4 IP RGCs. And now that we know that all of the on alpha cells in the retina have melanopsin phototransduction, it became very important to understand what influence these melanopsin signals may have on the ability of these on alpha cells to signal light. And when we look at how these cells respond to light, we found that on alpha cells in both wild type and melanopsin knockout animals show normal on synaptically driven light responses during the light stimulus itself. However, we found that the wild type cells actually have a very robust and long-term melanopsin-based signal that occurs long after the lights have gone off. And this is completely absent in the melanopsin knockout cells. And what this means is that melanopsin signaling in these on alpha cells is allowing these cells to encode both prior light exposure as well as overall ambient light intensity. And this was an important finding because it's been known for a long time that alpha ganglion cells in vitro have a very high sensitivity to low contrast stimuli and indicated that melanopsin itself might actually be involved in vision. And we realized that our collaborators at the Burke Institute can behaviorally measure contrast sensitivity by using the reflexive reaction of the mice to follow a rotating black and white bars. Mice have the highest contrast sensitivity at frequencies where the black and white bars are quite wide apart, which is consistent with their low visual acuity and hence is evolutionary adapted to their survival needs. What was really remarkable is that melanopsin knockout animals have a low contrast sensitivity, which Glenn has told us three years earlier before we discovered that SMI32 labels these genetically labeled IPRGCs. And then TIFF wanted to study the function of these non-M1 IPRGCs by using an available mouse in the lab that eliminates all the non-M1 IPRGCs. And she found that the contrast sensitivity is much even much more reduced than the melanopsin knockout in these animals. And so collectively, this study really makes three important and unexpected findings. The first is that all of the on alpha cells in the retina are intrinsically photosensitive, and that this on alpha subtype of cell is, corresponds to the M4 IPRGC subtype. 
Also, we found we can finally ascribe a behavioral function to these non-M1 IPRGCs, and very surprisingly, that function turns out to be in image-forming vision, and more specifically, in contrast sensitivity. And we also find that melanopsin itself is necessary for normal contrast sensitivity, even in the presence of fully functional broad cone photoreceptors. And Tiffany and I want to thank you for watching this video and hope that you enjoy reading our paper.